I'm here joined again with Echo Warner and also with Jody Mueller. And they both have some extremely interesting stories to tell. Um, Jody, I saw on your Facebook page that you had a picture of yourself. It looked like a mugshot. Yes. And, uh, and, and I know Echo has talked, just alluded to it in her, the last time I talked with her. Um, Jody, why don't you go first? Tell me what happened up in Iowa. Well, I went up there to deliver a message from, and I'm in Texas, so I drove 720 miles to deliver a message to the counselor at my children's school after hours and to let her know that my one of my daughters had uh, sent a Snapchat okay. message about uh, contemplating or having suicide ideation over what, because of the judge, in my case, November 18th, uh, stated that he would not award me with any custody or even visitation based on the fact that I had PTSD caused by eight abductions my ex has done. Now, you said that he actually, the judge actually blamed your ex-husband yes. for the PTSD and as a result took the kids away from you. Yes, okay. and then, ironically enough, he didn't put it on that custody order, but it is on the record and I'll have that on my transcripts if the court reporter ever does them. You know, I've given her the money and she hasn't started them. Okay, so I understand that you said you went to the school, you wanted to talk with the high school counselor about your daughter, but how did that, uh, how did that end in you getting arrested? Okay, so as I was leaving the school, the other, the counselor that I gave the information to had a male counselor come out the door and ask what I was doing there, and then he informed me that I had a no contact order, and I do not, I've never had one. Or anything and um, so he just made that up or did he think he, that I or? think he probably has one that my ex might have forged okay well I that's good no not sure at the time I was like maybe my ex forged one and uh, that's what I told him I said if you have one it's forged but I don't have one yeah and my rights have never been terminated except my proxy basically yeah when the judge says the kids don't or the kids can't see you now in my custody order it states that my twins did want to see me but he stated that the court recognized I had the PTSD because my ex has kidnapped my children, or he said abducted. And I said, and the legal abuse syndrome. And he didn't like that, but uh, he would not, he said it's not in the best interest of children to see you. So anyway, as, as I was leaving the uh, school and was told that I had a no contact order alleged, I said, no, I do not. It'd be in your best interest to contact CPS maybe and let them know what's going on with my daughter. And I said, I have to leave, and I, I walked away. So I knew that my words would get twisted. Something in that event would happen, and my ex would make up something, or something was going to happen. I'm used to this. Mm -hmm. So I called the police and said, I need to write an incident report. If you could meet me at the come and go station on 141, I'd appreciate it so I can write this before the school makes up something. It took them three hours to get there. Okay, so, three hours okay. later, two police showed up surround my car i'm already on the sidewalk i'm not even in that car and the police officer comes up and says uh, what is it that you want i mean very rudely and i said i wanted to write an incident report that's why i called and he says the only incident report we're going to do today is for the school and for curtis peon who is the father of the daughter that i saw as i was leaving the school and i said for what he goes because you forced her to hug you i go no we mutually <laughs> greeted each other and we were coming out the same kind of door, adjoining door. And you said you knew her from the past. Oh, yeah, she was at my house all the time. Okay. And she even said to me, your daughters are a mess. Something's wrong with them. They're not the same as they used to be. And I said, I know. I didn't tell her what my daughter had stated. I just, she said, what are you doing here? And I stated, I came here to give the counselor some information about parental alienation. And she says, yeah, my dad got that information that you'd sent him over a year ago. Okay. And I said, here's some more. Would you like it? And she said, yes, I would. Took it, so... They said that I forced the girl to take the information, which I did not. I asked her if she wanted it, and she said yes. Um, they stated, the dad stated apparently on a false police report, that he had told me never to talk to his daughter on social media or in any way, shape, or form, that it never happened. But now, wait a minute, you, you're still friends with her father, is that right? I thought so. Okay. I thought so. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, I'm, I'm just in my house a lot. So, I'm, I'm just trying to figure. I mean, oh yeah, this all is these what stories. Gaslighting is. Yeah. Jeff, this is what my ex has done. He's yeah. went to all the children's in the schools. You know, all my children's yeah. friends, parents, and made up these things. So the police officer, as soon as he asked or told me that he would not write the incident report, and I was the one that called, he then said, verbatim. Isn't it true that you think your children are being abused only because they hate your guts and they don't want to see you? And I just went, what? Who, where did you hear that? 
And I never said they were being abused. I said, all I said was my daughter had contemplated suicide or had suicidal ideation. I never once even talked about her twin. And right. I said, so where are you getting this information, sir? And he said, isn't it true? And I said, no, it's not true. My kids don't, they, they do not hate me. Right. And I said, what is happening is like a Stockholm Syndrome situation. And you're probably not familiar with it. And this is what parental alienation is like. And I'm telling him all this stuff. And then he says, stay right there. I'll be right back. So he walks away. Now, I call a member from the FCLU who's in the same area and asked if he would come. FCLU is? FCLU is Family Civil Liberties Union. Okay. And I called a man named Rick who lives in Johnston, Iowa, right next to basically where I was. And I said, I think I'm going to jail. And I told him what was happening. He goes, you can't go to jail for going to deliver a message. I go, their demeanor seems like, I'm going to jail. Please stay on the phone. So he stayed on the phone. He said, you know what? Just tell him if you're not going to write the incident report, you're going to leave. And just go tell him, here's the information I gave the counselor. It's a duplicate. So I did what he told me to do. And before I even got to the police officer, he goes, I'm not looking at that information. He said, I just, I'm going to leave this because I have to go. I have a meeting with my sister. He says, nope, because you're probably going to jail. And I said, why, why am I going to jail? And he says, well, I don't know yet. It's either going to be interference with official acts or harassment. Or we'll find a reason. Intimidation <laughs> or trespassing. Yeah, they need to work out the reason. Yeah. He didn't even know. He named four things. And I'm like, harassment for who? He says, the counselor, she, she feared for her life. The counselor feared for her life. And I said, for a paper cut? I don't understand. I'm not threatening. I just introduced myself. We shook hands yeah. as I left. And I asked her, did I, did I ask you for anything? She goes, no. I go, did I give you information? She goes, yes. Now, I did tell her. I said, I know what your next move is going to be. You're going to tell the, count, the principal, who does not like me, who's kept records from me because he's been gaslighted, and then he's going to call my ex, and my ex will call his lawyer, and the only person they have left is me. I fired my lawyer, so I'm in. So her allegation was that I told her I'm my own lawyer, and she has to listen to me. It got changed to that. I, I've never threatened her. Wow. I never said you have to listen to me. So for, those people, <laughs> for, so for the people who don't know, tell us what gaslighting is. So gaslighting is where... Uh, it's where... Um, you can make people believe something. Like they're crazy? It, it, like they're crazy. It's basically something we call crazy making. There's even a movie called Gaslight okay. from the 1940s if people want to look it up. But um, I give this analogy like, it's, it's say you're dating someone and you find them cheating on you. You literally see them cheating on you. And you confront the person that you're dating. I saw you. Here's the picture. I'm showing you the picture. And they can make you believe that didn't occur. Or, so that's how I, or somehow it was or your some, fault. And so the same crazy. thing with gaslighting yeah. in this situation is they, he is able to tell these people that I've abused my children, and the children don't, wow. you know, I don't know if they're telling this. I have no idea. Well, I've seen the pictures. I've seen some of the pictures and videos of you with your children, and um, I, they're beautiful children. Yeah, thank you. Uh, they were, they looked as happy as could be. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, it just astounds me. But anyway, to get back to, what did so, the police officer so do? So what happened after that is I'm, I'm now on the phone with the FCLU member. And he mm -hmm. said, please stay on the phone. I'd like someone because I don't, he's not going to let me get on there and record, so just stay on here. And so when I, you know, approached him and he said, this is what's probably going to happen or we don't know. He says, get to the other side of the car. Well, when he pulled in originally, I saw that he was looking up in the sky and it looked like he was looking for a camera. And so he had pulled his police officer, or patrol car around the other side. And I thought, he doesn't want this on on video. <laughs> so I made sure that I was on video and I said I'm gonna walk over here and I walked a few more steps and he told me to stop and the other officer came up. They're standing like for me to about six feet apart. Okay. And he says, Do you have a driver's license? I said, Well yes I have a driver's license. He goes, What's it say? I go, What do you mean? He goes, Is it Texas or Iowa? I said, It's Texas. That's where I live. And he says, Do you have a driver's license or not? I go, Yes. I just told you I did, but why are you asking? You're not even gonna file an incident report. Why are you asking this? He goes, that's it, you're interfering with official acts. They uh, ambushed me basically, came over, the one guy had his arm up my shirt in no time, and I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? His arms clear up my shirt, and the other guy had his arm, his uh, hands were in my waistband, and I believe he pulled out my ID, because I sure didn't have it. Later, the jailer had it. So anyway, he's feeling me up and down. And I said, what are you doing? He goes, we're looking for guns and knives. I said, I, I, I don't have guns or knives. <laughs> Which are illegal in high school area. So <laughs> another thing is I'm thinking, who told him I had guns and knives? Yeah. Another gaslighting thing, I'm sure. 
So I said, I don't have that. He says, that's it, you're going to jail. And he grabs my phone and said, don't you hang up. I said, Rick, please, please, please hang on the phone. And he goes, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. And he slammed my phone down on the cop car. They pushed me, I mean, they uh, pushed me around, they're handcuffing me. And I'm like, I'm not going, I'm not going. You haven't told me what is going on. You haven't read me my Miranda rights. He goes, we don't have to. I said, what am I going to jail for? Well, um, it's going to be, well, trespassing. I said, how is it trespassing? It's a public school. I don't have, I don't understand. I don't understand what I'm going, what am I going for? So they changed it recently they again. Changed, they changed it recently? <laughs> they changed, it, they changed it like three times before yeah. I got to the yeah. cop car. Okay. And then he says, well, because you didn't give us your driver's license. I go, you never asked me for it. You asked me what it said. Yeah. You specifically said, what does it say? So they shoved me in there and uh, slammed the door and they proceeded to go over to my car, which they never saw me in. They got in my car and they were in there about five, six minutes. They stomped all over my documents, which were on the floor that were ready to be mailed. That's kind of how my filing system in my car. And they stomped over my new banner. Um, they went through my tote, which had clothing in it. They went through my trunk, take five, six minutes. Um, they, I'm screaming, basically, going, what are you doing in my car? I never told you to get in my car. And they came back and I said, I, you need a, a warrant? He goes, nope, we can do what we want. And, and so he takes the phone and he shows it to me and he goes, click right from me he goes now who were you talking to and he goes back to luck now i think that's invasion of privacy i'm not sure but he also shut off my any hope of me having this recorded the rest wow. of it wow. so i threw that in the front i ended up basically in jail i was in there seven seven and a half hours a friend bailed me out for three hundred dollars and they had wanted me to stay in for the night well it was friday night and they said you'll go to court tomorrow i said i doubt it on a Friday night, on a Friday. I doubt it. So I said, no, I'm not doing that. And they wanted me to sign that I agreed with the charges. I said, hell, I don't even know which one it is. He gave me a list. <laughs> so I said, I'm not signing anything. And I don't I don't trust anyone anymore because of what I've been through. And I refuse to sign it. And in fact, I need the time between now and my bond appearance to file affidavits against these officers. And so they were upset about it, but I was bonded out and uh, went to my bond appearance. I was told we'd get the money back. The judge refused. And then I was supposed to have a pretrial conference. They have, now have dismissed my case. The, yeah. Whoa, they just, they just it never happened, it. huh? Well, the public, they, and the next thing you know, the records have disappeared. <laughs> it's disappeared. So I had a bond appearance. When I went to the bond appearance, I said, um, Your Honor, are you gonna ask me if I want a public um, pretender? He goes, what? I said, are you going to ask me if I can have a public pretender? <laughs> he goes, you mean public defender? Oh, no, I mean public pretender. And he says, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you've asked everybody else here but me. And I don't have a job because my judge kept uh, delaying court hearing, so I have no job. He goes, well, even if you get one, you still have to pay. I said, never heard of that before. I've already filed informal paupers and all this. He goes, no, you're going to pay at least $300. I go, no, I'm not, but I, I think I want one. He goes, do you want one? I said, well, I want one, but I'm going to fire them in the middle of it probably if they don't do what I asked them to do. <laughs> and so I said, okay. So they gave me a name, and uh, in the middle of that, Jeff, I was uh, writing, I mean, the president. Uh, and you have some letters there, everybody. too, right? Oh, tell, yeah. tell me about going to the media. Oh, those are going to the media. Okay. <laughs> what, what is your book there? What but, does that and say? And plus I wrote affidavits to the sheriff. I think that's why. But okay. Anyway. But that book um, there, tell me about that. Okay, this book is... Um, <clears throat> I was sitting in a church one day with a friend in uh, North Richland Hills, Texas, and the pastor came out the Sunday after the presidential election and said that he was called by Trump to be on his spiritual advisory team. Okay. Along with Ben Carson, Michelle Bach, and Franklin Graham, and several others. Okay. And so I announced that on my PA Awareness Iowa group, and I had 10, 10 stories. PA being parental alienation. Okay. Iowa. And within about an hour, I had 10 stories, and I thought, oh, this is huge. And so I announced that I would take stories, testimonies, and to that church. And so I've got 75 stories in here. Wow. Yeah, and I got that in just a couple weeks, really. And that, are those from Texas, Iowa, all over? All over. The, all over, all wow. over the United States. So this is the huge thing that you're talking huge. about. I think there's one in here, actually, that's, um, she might be from Australia. I, I mean, I've been reading them, it's just mind Horrendous, horrendous. So I took them to the church. And I gave it to Pastor Robert Morris's uh, senior pastor, Mike Brisky, and he, they've had it for over a month, and they just now called, wrote me and said to come and get it. There's nothing they can do. Wow. They said they'll pray over it. That's not going to help us. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about the churches. I'm not sure if it's but, Bradley Amendment or well, what's going on there. I'm not going to say anything about the churches, but uh, because there are a lot of good churches, good people right. in churches, 
but too often people use praying as the catch-all we're just going to pray for you yeah to, and to you know yeah way. yeah it's and i mean I'm, i hate to say that because i've been with the church um seminary educated but too often people pacify you it's kind of like giving you your vitamin for the day we'll pray for you and you know what we need to have more than prayer sometimes but anyway uh, if, if yeah. you could wrap this up because i also want to talk a little bit to echo about okay. her situation and then the red envelopes i'm holding here um today i sent something usually every day to someone uh, mm -hmm. one's going to u.s congressman david young okay my iowa congressman he's okay. in texas um he knows my children, and I've seen him in person when we're out in D.C. Right. Um, and I'm also sending it to um, four um, media outlets like WHO TV, Channel 5, Channel 8, and these are all, uh, three of them are in Iowa and one Texas. Great. So